you were looking at some superheated honey. Honey, 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 honey. Oh, that's hot. The reason I heated it up is I'm gonna put it in this spray bottle. The reason I wanna put it, ah! <laughs> the reason I wanna put it in this spray bottle is, excuse me, because I'm gonna spray my avocado flowers. The reason I wanna spray my avocado flowers is I want lots of avocados. And um, it's kind of a thing, actually. Here, watch this. I'll even get smarter about this. Get a little bit of water. Put it back in the microwave. And um, first we'll swirl it around with the top. This is where I have to cut it. Okay, that was certainly, okay, that was certainly a two-hand operation. Ooh, now the top's not even on right. Let's shake it up anyway. Oh. That was another two-handed operation to correct the top that I didn't do properly the first time with the two hands. Anyway, I'm gonna shake it up. And then what do we have here? We have honey water, right? And we have uh, viscous honey in here. And now, I wonder if I could do this. Uh, this is really a two-hand operation. <laughs> Someday I'm gonna sprout a third hand. You know, they say that adaptation is uh, uh, the mother of necessity or something like that, right? So I need a third hand. So sooner or later, it's just gonna sprout. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, okay, so now we have lots of honey. Now let's get some really, we have this hot water dispenser here. This is another two hand operation. Da, da, da. Dun 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 dun. That is not a little hand. Dun 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 dun. I love that song, Space Odyssey. Hey, uh, yeah, this is. We think this was a Pinkerton when it first fruited, but it's got the shape of a Pinkerton, but it's way bigger. It's way bumpier. It's got some some inexplicable uh, warts. <laughs> Uh, and it's not warts. That's a variety. But uh, anyway, the, I think the only, I believe this might be a daily 11. If it's not a daily 11, then I've got something incredibly cool and unique. I think, I think it's a daily 11. That was what we've come to conclude. Can't remember where I got this tree or how it got here or whatever. I buy a lot of stuff and didn't fruit for a long time. And then it fruited. And by the time it fruited, I had lost all labeling and everything else. So, uh, but the... The point is right now today, the only reason I think I have this fruit here and uh, those two proudly hanging beauties and that one up there is because I uh, sprayed them with Sunny Delight. <laughs> I ended up with a can of Sunny Delight. And what I remember about Sunny Delight is that whenever you crack Sunny Delight open when I was stupid enough to drink it and when I didn't know any better and I was a little kid, the bees would always come and harass you and try to drink your Sunny Delight. Well, then I saw some videos. Guys were spraying uh, honey water on top of their avocado blooms, and they claim that uh, it was attracting the bees and getting better fruit set. So uh, I thought, well, you know what? Honey Delight works like that. Let's try that. So I busted out the Tiny Delight, or the Sunny Delight, wasn't about to drink it, so I yeasted it on my avocado trees. And I only had three blooms on the tree. One was over here, one was over here, and one was over here. There's actually a video on YouTube about it. I need to go back and verify that. And I also went, let's go look at this. I also went and I did the same thing to a bunch of flowers that I had on my Nabal tree. And uh, now this year, a whole bunch of trees don't have any fruit at all. Like this Mexico La Grande, hardly any fruit at all. But the Nabal tree, look, there's fruit everywhere in this tree. I mean, it's all over the place. There's, I don't know, 50, 60 fruit throughout the whole entire tree. And so, you know, we don't really have a scientific controlled experience. Look at the cluster of fruit up there. 
Okay, we don't, but I did spray this thing down real heavily because it had a whole bunch of flowers. And so I am now a firm believer in putting something sweet on your trees to boost your production. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's like April 29th, I believe. And a lot of these trees are really far along and they're blooming. And uh, the more tropical ones like this one, which we think is daily 11, is still, it's not, I mean, it's, some of the flowers are open, but not entirely yet. The uh, Nabal reed and I guess daily 11 here, they're more tropical and they take a little longer to open their flowers. Whereas you see over here with Zutano, more Mexican variety, flowers are completely open. So this one always gets a lot of fruit. So I'm going to spray down the most important one here. If I could grow, oh look, look. We've got a little baby. I wonder what that is. Could be a new variety. Um, so if I could get this thing to make a bunch of avocados, then I could sell this to the store. They'll buy them all day long. So we're gonna spray honey water all over this tree. And we'll just have to see what happens later on. And all the flowers up there, I'll have to get it on shoot mode. I'm also gonna collect some budwood from this tree today so I can start selling this tree to you guys in another four years once everything's grown up. But uh, honey water, so basically superheated the honey in here. It's about one eighth honey to seven eighths water. Heated up really hot, so it's very viscous. Honey gets viscous when you heat it up. I can smell the honey. So, oh, there's some open flowers right there. See those flowers are opened up. Anyway, so maybe I'll keep this video around and I'll see what kind of fruit set I get. I'll do a controlled experiment on a couple trees here. All right, I got, I'm busy. I gotta turn this thing off, give me a break. Hey look, it's working, there's fruit. Right there, you see them? Just kidding. This is the first one to fruit every year. Uh, this is, um, this is Mexicola, love this tree. It's the earliest one to get going. Look how abusively I've grown this tree. It's hanging out over the cliff. Gets no water whatsoever. Uh, yeah, I'm a bad dad, bad dad. Um, anyway, I try to trim this side off here so it doesn't come careening down the hill. But what I've done, I haven't really done a controlled experiment. The only control in it is I'm spraying everywhere I could reach on all my trees with this honey. So that's gonna be the control experiment. And as you can see that, uh, if I can zoom properly, as the Mexicola avocado always makes fruit and it's already fruiting anyway, we're not even gonna spray this one. But that's what we're gonna look for. In about two or three weeks, I'll come back and we will look for fruit set on the trees, which hopefully we'll have a lot. Somebody tell Gary to fertilize and water his avocado trees. I'll probably do a lot better. The darn deer didn't keep destroying the drip system. That's what I'm up against here. Okay, this really has nothing to do with the honey video other than I shot honey as high as I could in my little Kato Wurtz tree. But it's so beautiful right now, I just have to take this shot. I took a still shot. So now I'm gonna take a moving video shot looking up at the massive amount of flowers. This tree is probably, uh, gosh, how old is this tree? 18 years old. And it's really, it's a little kind of dwarf. It's the most dwarf tree there is. But look, it's getting big. It's probably got about a, maybe a 10 inch diameter trunk. And it's probably now 16 feet across by about 14 feet tall. 13 feet tall, look at that thing. It's got a ton of avocados right now. I had it even more last year. There's my owl box, you need one of those. Get the gophers. But uh, yeah, I just sprayed it down with honey. I got honey all over myself. So hopefully we'll get an even more massive fruit set next year. Here's the fruit set from last year. There's a bunch of them in here. So we'll see. Hopefully this honey thing will put it off the chart. Okay guys, it's now July and uh, here's my big crazy daily 11 
avocado that I so meticulously uh, sprayed down with honey water back, uh, I guess, in May or April. And <laughs> wow, I've literally never seen a tree set so much fruit. Now this is the tree with the really big fruit. It gets really big. And uh, I don't know what's gonna happen when there's millions of fruit on the tree. And these trees right now, they don't get any water. I'll probably dump some water on here manually, but I need to redo the system because the deer messed it all up. And right now it's, it's been off for two years. And you can see these trees, they still put out tons of fruit. That's a Zutano over there. And you can see all the fruit. See all that fruit? Oh, there's fruit all over this tree. I didn't spray that one down much. That one always flowers. But this one here, this tree got just a few fruit uh, a few years ago. The first time, that's when I realized it was so huge and crazy. Uh, we have, I'll put a link to the video of the fruit tasting for this tree and how big it is. And I actually had some fruit on this tree. <laughs> and truthfully, you know what I think happened? I think that the guys that I have working here, some high school kids, I think they took them. <laughs> there were three. And there were only three last year. I sprayed those down. They only had a few flowers last year, like uh, 18 months ago. And I sprayed those flowers down meticulously. And each one of them set fruit, which made me really believe in the honey method. Mixing up the honey and with the water and spraying on. Now you can see what's happening here. Uh, there's just not enough water and nutrients to support all the fruits. Some of them are drying up. You can see there's plenty that are left over. So it'll be interesting to see if these fruit get as big as they did when there were only a few on the tree. I suspect they're not going to get as big. But, you know, this tree's never set fruit like this. And I think it was because of the honey water. So I think if you have some trees out there, you really want to set fruit. Well, I would highly recommend the honey water method. And uh, I also sprayed down... I believe my little cotto over here. And look, here's some fruit ready to go. I need to pick these. But uh, so this is fruit that was born on the tree like 15 months ago. It's ready to eat. Here's the fruit that uh, is brand new as of like three months ago. It'll be ready this time next year. And you see it actually, it actually set a lot of fruit too. I... Oh yeah, it's the first time I'm looking at this since I sprayed it now. There's a lot of fruit on this tree. Okay, so I really think that honey method works. The whole basis is to attract the bees to your tree any way you can. And I mean, look, there's fruit everywhere in this thing. And again, here's some more fruit for this tree. I'm gonna pick these fruit right now. I'm gonna eat these. They are ready. Um, I'm hungry. Problem is, I have no fruit right now because I was lame and I didn't pick any. When you pick a, this fruit off this tree, unlike when you go to the store, you have to wait three or four days for it ripen up. Those fruit have already been off the tree for ten, seven days, five to seven days. So here's another one. Um, so now I'm gonna have to wait ten days, ten days without eating avocados. It's like water, water everywhere, but yet not a drop to drink. Avocados, avocados everywhere, yet not a guacamole to be had. Um, I'll have to find some more bigger ones. There's one up there. I don't know if I can reach that. There's, yeah, they're up there. I just gotta climb up. But anyway, um, I'm looking at the results of the honey water experiment, and I'm thinking that this is uh, absolutely effective from at least the antidotal evidence that I'm seeing we have a really healthy fruit set, which we don't always get. But this is the first time I've sprayed it down with honey water. So, and I've, of course I saw this on YouTube myself. I'm just like you guys. I like get information wherever I can. Um, look, are there, yeah, there's avocados everywhere I look. There's avocados everywhere I look. So, anyway. Once they get to this stage, it's pretty much a done deal. You know, you're gonna get fruit. They're not gonna drop. Once you get to, if you have fruit in July, August, from the fruit set 
in uh, in April. Well, you, by golly, you're gonna get yourself some. Look at that cluster! Oh my god, <laughs> this is amazing. I have to make a point to do this every year. Look at all that fruit. Look at all that fruit. There's one right there. I think I'm gonna pick about 10 right now. And that's pretty much the story of the day. Um, I also have some Nabal fruit down there. I can pick that right now. Get some of those. Okay, there's my bounty for the day. These are navels. And these are uh, Little Cotto, and no, it's not a Little Cotto. <laughs> it's a Dwarf Cotto. The tree is a dwarf, and uh, the, uh, the fruit is actually larger than a regular hoss. And these trees, these fruit would be even larger if I actually watered these trees. This is a dry farmed operation at this point in Northern California. One of my theories is that Northern California actually gets enough rainfall and lower evaporation rates to support mature avocados uh, that are rooted in well and heavily mulched and uh, dry farmed. And that's certainly the case here where we're actually getting lots of fruit production the last two or three years from mature trees that we've weaned from irrigation. So I've never heard of anybody doing that anywhere. Uh, maybe in Hawaii, I guess, but uh, not in California. So I think Northern California actually has promise for more ecological production of these avocados than pretty much, um, you know, Southern California in that regard because we don't need as much water. We don't need to take as much of an input of water to create this fruit as they do down in the dry coastal deserts. So something to think about as we move forward and try to repair our earth. There you go. No water, avocados.